friends. Thank you so much for joining me. We normally are reading the Bible on this channel, but today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. I was encouraged to watch a video by someone called Non-Stamp Collector, Pop Quiz Bible Contradictions. And this video was made 12 years ago, and over the course of these 12 years, three and a half million people have watched this video now, including myself. And unfortunately, some of those three and a half million people have probably decided the Bible is not reliable, that there is no way that Christianity is true, that the contents of the Bible are not trustworthy. And as a result, why would they choose to believe in Jesus? Why would they choose to read the Bible? Why would they choose to start doing the research themselves? In my personal opinion, that video was very manipulative. And obviously the person that put that video together is incredibly intelligent. I have a feeling that they know that they are manipulative because it's such a twisting of scripture. And it's very creative how you pick scripture and you tie things out against one another in a way that's just absolutely ridiculous. In the Bible, we're looking at the character of God and his character cannot be described in one verse. It's a book that should be read from cover to cover and implemented as one unit. Anyways, let me not get too, too distracted, but I'm going to cover one of the contradictions posted in that video. The one contradiction that he mentioned in the comments section of the video, and that was regarding Luke 2.2. 2. And in his comments, he said, please don't come at me with cheap excuses of why this is actually a valid response, copyist error, etc." And I must say, the example that he gave for this contradiction was absolutely ridiculous. If I read this as the only excuse for this contradiction, I would not buy it either. In Pop Quiz non stamp Collector's video, he said the reason for this error is an English text translation mistake. But there is a lot of evidence available online and in Bible study commentaries that refute this without any question or doubt. And I'm going to provide that information some here and even more so in the comments section of this video. I'm going to tackle one thing at a time and we're going to start with the contradiction in Luke chapter two. The text which is called into question Luke 2 2, Jesus was born in the days of Herod who presumably died in 4 BC. Then, how could Quirinius be governing Syria, who presumably began his reign in 6 AD? No, this is not an English translation mistake. We're going to go on, and I will be using BibleStudies.org predominantly. I also use Enduring Word Commentary and ComeReason.org, which I got from a Christian Stack Exchange quorum. Okay, But mainly, I'll be using BibleStudies.org. That information is available to you all. Okay, Cyrenius was governor of Syria. Fixing a precise date on the census is problematic. Publius Sullius Quirinius is known to have governed Syria during AD 6 to 9. A well-known census was taken in Palestine in AD 6, and Josephus records that it sparked a violent Jewish revolt. Mentioned by Luke when quoting Gamaliel in Acts 5.37. The author of Acts is the same author of the book of Luke, which is in question here. So the same author mentions this in Acts is the one that we're saying doesn't remember this when he's using it in Luke chapter two. Okay. So Gamaliel in Acts chapter five, verse 37, Quirinius was responsible for administering that census. And he played a major role in quelling the subsequent rebellion in stopping the subsequent rebellion. But that is not the sense that Luke has in mind here in the book of Luke, because it occurred about a decade after the death of Herod. Much too late to fit Luke's chronology in light of Luke's meticulous care as a historian, it would be unreasonable to charge Luke with such a ridiculous mistake. Archaeology has vindicated Luke. Yes. A fragment of stone discovered at Tivoli near Rome in AD 1794, a long time before Non-Stamp Collector published his video, um, contains the inscription, so this is in AD 1794, contains the inscription in honor of a Roman official who was twice the governor in Syria. Twice, not one time, but twice. Just like how more than one census was taken over these years, this gentleman was also twice in this political position of authority. How about that? Amazing. He was probably military governor at the same time that history records Varus was civil governor there. With regard to dating the census, ancient records in Egypt mentioned a world census in 8 BC. That date is not without problems. 6 BC is probably the earliest possible date for Jesus' birth. 
Evidently, the census was ordered by Caesar Augustus in 8 BC, but was not actually carried out in Palestine until two to four years later, perhaps because of political difficulties between Rome and Herod. They were having a lot of political difficulties because they were power hungry and there was a lot of other conflict happening, okay? That's all reasonable and it's very widely documented in the historical, historical records. You can see I don't do this normally. The precise year of Jesus' birth is not known, but it was probably no earlier than 6 BC and probably no later than 4 BC. Luke's readers were familiar with the political history of the time and would no doubt have been able to discern a precise date from the information that was given. Now, I have a lot of more information that I could provide, but I'm going to leave some of that in the subtitles of my video because I do not want you all to be overwhelmed and because I'm not an expert in this type of thing. But if we take all of the information that we have so far together, we know that there were at least three census in the area of Judea, one in 8 BC, one starting around 2 BC, and one in 6 AD. The only point that is really in question then is whether Luke was mistaken in ascribing the census to the time when Quirinius was in the role of Syrian governor, since Quirinius wasn't governor of the Syrian province until after Archelaus was deposed. Critics claim that Luke misidentified the census as the smaller one, which happened some eight to 10 years after Herod died. Either Luke is wrong on his dating of Jesus' birth, or Matthew made up the story of Herod the Great and the killing of the infants. Is this, in is this an accurate objection? No! Instead of this problem, there are two main solutions that the Christian scholars offer, and each has some good merit. The first point is the terminology Luke used when writing about Quirinius' governorship over Syria. In stating that Quirinius controlled the Syrian area, Luke doesn't use the official political title of governor. And I'm not going to say this word, but it's something like legatus. I'm, I know I'm not saying that right. I don't speak anything but English. <laughs> but the broader term, hegemon, which is the ruling officer or procurator, this means that Quirinius may not have been the official governor of Judea, but he was in charge of the census because he was a more capable and trusted servant of Rome than the more inept Sarturinius. Justin Martyr's apology supports this view, writing that Quirinius was a procurator, not a governor of the area of Judea. As Gleason, Archer writes, in order to secure efficiency in dispatch, it may well have been that Augustus and Quirinius, in charge of the census, enrollment in Syria between the close of Saturinius administration and the beginning of Varus' term of service in 7 BC. It was doubtless because of the competent handling of the 7 BC census that Augustus later put him in charge of. The 7 AD census, Archer says, that the Roman history records Quirinius leading this effort to quell rebels in that area exactly at that time. So such a political arrangement is not a stretch. If Quirinius did hold such a position, then we have no contradiction. And we know that he did because they found something outside of Rome. And I'm actually going to show you a picture of it. And I will be linking that in the description of the video. Um, we have no contradiction. The first census was taken during the time of Jesus' birth. But Josephus' census would have come later. The option seems to be entirely reasonable. So I'm going to show you this tablet that they found. Fragment of the sepulchral... <laughs> I'm going to attach it so you can read what it says. Inscription of Quirinius. The inscription found near Tivoli in 1764 probably belonged to the tomb of Quirinius. And it's much more than probably because there is a lot of information on this. But that is the tablet. You can see it there. And I'm going to attach it in the video. And this is according to the Vatican. I don't want to say anything that I don't know, but I'm going to link these attachments of this video. This figure is mentioned in the gospel in relation to the census at the time of the birth of Jesus Christ in Bethlehem, when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Indeed, this census has been a focus of intense historical debate, as it would appear that it took place 12 years after the birth of Jesus. In fact, the inscription in question with the term twice legate attests the possibility of the Quirinius held an earlier post in Syria. Problem solved. That's just one of these so-called uh, contradictions. Doesn't seem to be a contradiction to me. There's going to be so much more information linked in the description. There was more than one census and Quirinius was in a position of authority more than one time. Two separate incidences, no contradiction whatsoever. That is one of the things mentioned. It is not an English translation problem. 
It is two separate occasions, not one. There's no contradiction there. And please read the comments because I will be attaching a lot more information for you there. The Bible is reliable. The Bible is true. There might be copyist errors. There might have been drops in a number or so, but it does not change the value, the integrity, or the truth of scripture. The Bible is true and the Holy Spirit is alive inside of me and I hope you choose him too. So have a blessed day and thanks for joining me in reading through the Bible. It's true, it's reliable, and God loves you very much. So, so do I. Have a great day. Bye-bye. God bless.